Hello and welcome to this presentation on Synedge. In the next minutes, I would like to show you how devices can be cloud-enabled using the open source SaneEdge project. My name is Stefan Vajong and I'm the chief architect of Software AG. Previously, I co-founded Cumulosity IoT, which is nowadays Software AG's IoT platform. Before going into details of SaneEdge, let's first have a look. What are the challenges we need to solve in the new world of IoT? One of the main problem is connectivity. How can we connect all the devices to the cloud? When I say cloud, that can also be a remotely available data center. But let's stay with the term cloud. This connectivity was never an easy problem. Why? Because networks are unreliable, unsecure, and in some cases, you even have to pay for the traffic that you send over the network. So what do I mean with that? Networks are unreliable because there might be network outages. And you as a device provider have to make sure that data is transferred reliable over these unreliable networks. So as one example, we have one customer that has devices mounted on elevators. So the elevators move up and down, and if they are at the top of the building, they have good network coverage. But if they are on the top, bottom of the building, in the cellar, they have bad coverage. And you can imagine how difficult it is in that situation to transfer, for example, a new software version to this elevator. But in mobile networks, you have additional challenges. So you have limited throughput, so in remote areas, only a few kilobytes per hour. And you have sometimes, or actually in many cases, to pay for the amount of traffic that you send over the networks. So if you reduce the message size, and a lot of our customers put a lot of emphasis on that, you can really save a lot of money. Just imagine you have to connect 100,000 devices that are 24 by 7 online, then the message reduction is really worth being done to save your money. And then also security. So while typical telecommunication networks are pretty secure and managed in that way by the telecommunication operators, you might have people in factories that want to sneak into your traffic, or you might have devices that travel to other networks where they roam, and other networks might have less security. So quite some challenges to be solved. But there are more. Once you have established the connectivity, you want to manage the device remotely. And for that, you have to implement over the air software updates, firmware updates. You want to understand how your software runs in the device in the field and not only in your test lab. And in many cases, nowadays, customers want to install new functionality over the air. For example, new analytics algorithms. And all that functionality have to be implemented. What makes IoT especially complex is that these devices are typically constraint devices. So the bill of material of the device is optimized to be as price efficient as possible, which means that you have only limited memory resources, limited CPU resources, limited storage. And that makes it even more challenging to meet all these requirements on one side and on the other hand, just use the limited amount of resources that are available. Now, of course, there are already solutions out in the market that solve some of these problems. Typically, these come from IoT platform vendors. So these IoT platforms comes with so-called device SDKs. 
that solve some of these problems, but they only support the specific IoT platform. And that is a vendor login that might be okay for some, but for a lot of other customers, that is not acceptable because they don't want to get locked to one IoT platform vendor. And even more important, if they chip their devices to other customers, to factories, or they get installed in other customer premises, these other customers also don't want to get locked in into the platform that was chosen by the device vendor. So you need freedom to select the cloud vendor even at the customer premise. So how to solve all these challenges? That's why we initiated the SynEdge open source projects with our industrial partner. SynEdge.io is based on our experience connecting hundreds of different IoT devices to the cloud. In many of these projects, we didn't start from a greenfield. Instead, the device was already there and it had already running software. So let's look into a few examples. So the PLC vendors want to connect their devices to the cloud and they want to extract additional variables from the PLC and forward that to the cloud, for example, for analytics. Or we have protocol gateway partners that have protocol gateways that can, can convert from field bus protocols into other protocols, or they can connect to historians or SCADA systems. Also, these protocol gateway vendors want to improve their products and connect these gateways to the IoT platform. Or we have quite many machine producers that want to offer remote management, remote software updates for these machines, and they have, ex of course, existing software. And in all these cases, SynEdge.io can be easily installed besides this existing software, and by that enable the connectivity to a remote IoT platform, and it provides out-of-the-box device management. So let's have a look what actually is inside this SynEdge.io project. So SynEdge.io, first of all, can run on resource-constrained IoT devices. So whether you have ARM, V6, V7, or V8, or other processors, whether you have only very small amount of memory available, or you have a big um, machine, on all of these platforms, SynEdge can run. So how do we connect a device to these different cloud platforms? For that, we have a component called MQTT Bridge that provides an MQTT client to connect to all these platforms. MQTT is a standard IoT protocol that is now common in the industry and is actually supported by all of these cloud vendors. But actually, why is it called MQTT Bridge and not MQTT Client? Because we have an additional component in SynEdge, which is the MQTT Broker. And that might be a little bit surprising to you. And to explain that better, let's have a look at how traditionally you would connect your devices to clouds. Traditionally, there were the so-called device SDKs, and each vendor had device SDKs for different languages. So Comulosity had a device SDK, for example, for C, Python, Java, and so on. The same for Azure and other vendors. We found that this language-specific approach really has a lot of flaws, and we wanted to support even more languages. So therefore, instead of having a language specific approach, we went for an approach where you can use any programming language in your device and you connect via an inter-process communication protocol to the SynEdge component. And of course, it's pretty obvious then not to invent an own one or to use other protocols, but to use MQTT again, also internally 
in the device to achieve con communication between the software components in the IoT device. So with this MQTT broker, you get a common communication protocol for all components inside your IoT device. Then on top of that, there's a data mapper. This is needed because up to now, with just the MQTT bridge and the MQTT broker, you can send all kinds of messages to any cloud. But in many cases, you not only want to send, let's say, generic payload, but you want to send semantics. So you want to send, for example, a temperature increase from your sensor to the cloud. And clouds have different data formats for that. So not only protocol interoperability is needed, but also data format interoperability is needed. And that is provided by the data broker, sorry, data mapper, which converts from an Synedge internal format into the cloud specific format. Then last component that comes with Synedge and connects to the MQTT broker is the device management agent, which provides all device management features that you would like to have, mainly over the air software updates, over the air firmware update, but also monitoring the components and resources in the IoT device and more. On top of that, there is a command line interface so that you can easily configure and start and stop the complete Synedge. And it provides specific support for certificate management. So in our experience, we found that dealing with certificates, especially for newcomers, is not that trivial. And we have put a lot of effort in making certificate management easy for developers, but also then later in the field. So let's have a look how you would actually use Synedge. You can install Synedge, of course, for example, using uh, Debian package management. And then to make an easy first connection, you can create a certificate. In this case, it's a self-signed certificate. That's obviously not something you would use in production. Uh, in, in production, the certificate would be created by a CA, a certificate authority in the factory. But as a developer, to try out Thin Edge, that's a nice approach. Just create your self-signed certificate with a one-liner. And now you are ready to connect to a cloud. So let's start with Cumulosity. So you set the endpoint of Cumulosity, so which tenant you want to connect to. And then you upload the self-signed certificate. Again, that is not something you would do in production. In production, you would have a root certificate pre-installed in the tenant. And then you're ready to go and you can connect to Cumulosity. This command creates actually the reliable and secure MQTT connection from the device to the cloud. And now you can use that connection publishing, for example, a message to the internal bus that is then forwarded via the bridge to the cloud. In this case, you signal that the temperature has increased to 21.3 degrees. Now, you can do the same with Azure. You connect to Azure by setting the endpoint of the Azure account that you are using. You connect to Azure. And then here is the beauty. You can send the same message to the same topic. And it arrives then at the Azure cloud in the Azure specific format. So that brings me to the end and to the summary. So just to summarize the advantages of Synedge. So we put a lot of effort in 
providing more options for you. So we didn't want to reduce the number of alternatives you have, but to increase them. So you can connect to more cloud IoT platforms with SynEdge. You can use any programming language, C, C Sharp or Rust or whatever you like, and send data to the cloud using the internal MQTT bus. Actually, internally, we are using a lot of Rust because we found it is very secure language, but still very efficient. But use what language you are comfortable with. You can use any message payload. Yeah, so you can also use your own message payload or cloud specific ones or use industry specific formats like uh, OPC UA. Or you can use, of course, also the thin edge um, normal standard format that is then automatically converted with the built in mappers. And you can use any, any platform, so any hardware or operating system. Then SynEdge comes with a robust device management based on our experience with managing millions of devices. There is an extensible over-the-air software management agent included that you can extend to different artifact types beyond Debian or Docker. There is an over-the-air firmware management available or configuration management or monitoring. And I'm sure there will be more features in the future. And most important, SynEdge has really been created to run on devices with limited resources. So we are targeting resource usage of less than 16 megabyte of RAM, hopefully even less. And we put a lot of effort in making that also reliable using watchdog mechanisms and other mechanisms. Thanks a lot for, for listening. And I really hope that I could convince you that having a common open source project in the industry to solve this connectivity problem ensures that all future IoT devices are securely and reliably connected and come with a great device management features. For details, please don't hesitate to contact me directly or visit our website, synedge.io, where you can download the first version or where you can study the documentation, including architectural descriptions. Thank you very much and stay safe.